Recently I reviewed a 240Hz monitor and while it was a really nice experience I couldn't necessarily tell uh, specifically if I was better playing on that monitor or whether it was just you know me enjoying the experience a little bit better and all that sort of stuff. Now AOC have their own 240Hz monitor that's this one here the AG251FZ and it's actually a really nice monitor it's got a headphone hanger in the back and some USB ports on the side. Uh, features obviously 240Hz refresh rate at 1080p and overall just a nice design nice stand and all that sort of stuff so pretty impressed. To make sure that this is a fair test we're going to be using the proper scientific methodology of a controlled and blinded trial. I'm going to be getting my partner to change the refresh rates uh, without me knowing which is which and I'm going to be doing three sets of all three refresh rates. I'm using CSGO here as this is obviously a game that can benefit from higher refresh rates as the pros will tell you uh, and this is something that I do have a little bit of, of experience in but I'm certainly nowhere near a pro at CSGO, pretty terrible actually but hopefully this gives some uh, at least interesting results. To keep consistency with the testing I was playing offline with bots uh, with a hard, uh, you know, bot set to hard and the uh, map Dust 2. This is something you can try yourself if you want to try and replicate these results or feel free to, you know, test them out and let me know what your findings are in the comments down below. I was running a full match of CSGO, uh, Counter Terrorist versus Terrorist and I was always on the Counter Terrorist team. I was also employing the same tactics each run as well to try and get some replicatable results and I'd also mention that I ran four runs or four full games, you know, up to eight points uh, per refresh rate per run so a total of 12 uh, you know games 12 matches per set and a total of 36 uh, games uh, for the entire test. So without further ado that is the methodology sorted let's take a look at the results. Now we could take a look at the raw data for which I have three pages full uh, but what I did was ended up uh, doing average kills per round and average death per round per match and then averaging that across the four rounds that I had per test and then I also ended up averaging that at the end as well although we'll speak about that in a second. Now, as I said, I ran three runs per three refresh rates, so uh, we did actually have a bit of an interesting set of data. For the very first set of data we had, uh, kills per round were basically the same for 60 and 240, with 144 actually being a little bit lower, although really not significantly different. Uh, different. That's uh, 2.86 and 2.85 for 60 and 240, versus 2.3 uh, 2 kills per round for 144. When it comes to the average deaths per round, uh, again, it was a very similar set, uh, where 240 hertz was actually technically the worst, with basically 0.3 deaths per round versus 144 with 0.12 and 60 with 0.27. When you look at the last run that I did which was the most controlled set of uh, runs that I, I did here uh, it's actually kind of reverse order in terms of what you'd expect for deaths per round where 240 hertz was worst at 0.31 with then 144 hertz being uh, 0.28 and uh, 60 actually being the best at 0.22. When it comes to kills per round this one was a little bit mixed with 60 technically being best here at 0. Point, at 3.5 uh, with 240 hertz then coming second at 3.4 and 144 coming in last in uh, 3.2. When you collect in all of the data and average out the well I suppose averages of the averages for each round you realize that a that's three levels of averaging aka inception uh, and sounds a bit reductionist and uh, also there isn't a statistical a statistically significant difference in the the numbers that we have here. When you take a look at the deaths here there's only a delta a difference of uh, 0.05 deaths per round across 324 rounds that's kind of crazy that's kind of a, a fairly marginal difference when you look at it and in terms of kills per round as well you're also looking at a delta uh, of 0.17 uh, here so really a, a fairly minuscule difference especially when you consider that that is over 324 rounds total. So what's the conclusion here? Well it's possible that I'm just not good enough at CSGO to really have a statistically significant difference when it comes to the different refresh rates. If you have any other suggestions for games by the way that you want me to test in this manner let me know in the comments down below and I will try and retest them in the future for another video but for the time being for at least the average person 240 hertz as a conclusion restatement doesn't really make a big difference. 
Now, of course, this is only for CSGO and this is only for my ability. So this could be uh, very much varied for you. And especially if you ask you know, people who genuinely play CSGO as a pro player, you will hear from them that higher refresh rates are better because they're uh, able to do faster reaction times and all that sort of stuff. I'd also mention that there is potential for limitation in the panel itself where I did see a little bit of ghosting at 240 hertz even with uh, overdrive engaged to maximum on the, the monitor settings and all that sort of stuff. So I would bear that in mind as well as there may be a little bit of a difference there. But considering that there isn't a difference between 60 and 144 for my results anyway, that would uh, kind of state that it's not too much to do with the monitor and more to do with me and my ability. So that's pretty much it for this video. As I said, if you have any more game suggestions, let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, also feel free to let me know too. If you enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe. And if you found it useful and informative, as I said, let me know down there too. If you want to know any more about this monitor, I'll leave a link in the description down below for you. And if you want to support the channel and keep me doing these rather uh, effort-filled videos, uh, then feel free to take a look at the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links, as well as the merch links link and everything else that's in the description down below too and otherwise that's kind of it i'm going to leave some other videos over here for you and the subscribe button over here too and otherwise that's it so thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video